good morning there. How you doing? Well, that sun is very bright, isn't it? Oh, should I, should I sit over here and you can see me? Okay, we'll do this. So how's it going, everybody? New day, new me. Right, guys? I gotta walk them right away. I just wanna say good morning. It's gonna be a good day. We're in Kamloops, British Columbia. We're headed home. We gotta deliver this load behind us to Portage La Prairie on... Uh, on two days from now, Thursday. Thursday, because it's Tuesday today. So this is where we're at. This is my view, waking up. We're at that petrol pass. Beautiful. Chevy, Chevy, that's not a toy, that's the mic. How you doing, tell the good people. Tell the good people, how about you Weezer, how you doing? Hey, that's the mic, Chevy, that's not a toy. Look, I say toy to me, man. Don't sniff his butt. You caught me, man. Sorry. So sorry. You guys want to go outside? Let's do this. Me and my dirty sweater. <laughs> it's the only one I got. My jacket is too warm. And my sweater is dirty. So I guess I'll just be dirty. That's okay. Look at this. Look at this. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. British Columbia. It's actually their slogan, beautiful British Columbia. All right, you guys wait, okay? Chevy, I'm talking to you. Don't push your brother off the seat. You wait, okay? Just need these steps. They're all dirty because uh, I had them mounted outside the truck for a while. And I'm gonna have to do it again once Brit comes on the truck, but for now I'm gonna try to save them. I'm gonna wash them at home uh, as soon as I get a chance. Wait, wait. bud okay here we go hold on diesel I'll be back one at a time I can only handle one of you so there's the load looking fancy all nice and wrapped up Chevy oh you're excited for the day look at you go okay let's go to the grass over there bud come on we're gonna go over here come on man oh slippery watch out Whoop, whoop, whoop. Get in there, Chevy. Get in there. I've trained both Diesel and Chevy to uh, go number two in the long grass or in the bush so that they don't go on the lawn. So the big guys, they never poop on the lawn. Frank, I was never around when he was a puppy to train him like that. And I don't know if small dogs, they're a little harder to train sometimes, but <laughs> he likes to go right in front of the door on the driveway, but that's okay. At least his are easy to clean up. The big guys though. Oh, it's such a relief that they, uh, I don't have to go around the yard picking up after them all the time. So that is a thing you can do if you're wondering how to get your dog to, uh, to stop doing his business on your front lawn, just from pup, from a puppy, train them to only go in the long grass or the bush. Chev, I haven't opened the door yet. Yeah, you can't get in until I open the door. I am the opener of doors. I am the opener of doors. Yes, yes I am. I'm also the giver of food. Oh, oh, you just sacked me, man. Oh, on camera. Okay, I deserve that. I deserve that. I'll open the door. Okay, you gotta start from the bottom, though, okay? There you go. Yikes, he wanted to go inside. Okay, Diesel, let's hook you up here. We need to wash our truck. This truck. We always need to wash this truck. Oh. This is Canada, right, Diesel? Everything is always dirty all winter because of the roads. Come on, let's go a little further. Let's go to the let's go to the long grass here, Diesel. Come on. No, no, no. You know better. Long grass. There we go. Watch the ice. Don't pull me down on the ice, buddy. There you go. So we're above freezing here. There's, as you can see, there's there's hardly any snow here. Just a little bit of ice. I'd say we're probably around zero outside right now, or 32 Fahrenheit. I really got to learn Fahrenheit. I, I know how to do the conversion. I'm just really not good at the math. Doing it in my head, especially for the first thing in the morning. But it's it's a good temperature, is what I'm saying. And uh, these mountains around us here, there's more behind there. They're the Rocky Mountains. They hold the, the warm air out west here and they keep the cold air on the prairies. So as soon as we get over the mountains later this evening, 
it's going to the temperature is going to drop pretty quickly alberta's not too cold yet i've already checked not too worried about that saskatchewan starts to get really cold into the minus 20s but that polar vortex is hovering over manitoba right now because the cold arctic air comes down from the north uh, from over the hudson's bay and gets pushed down through nunavut over manitoba and into minnesota north dakota so we're all experiencing you know negative 40 degree weather this next week as i've been saying i've i know i'm repeating myself Kingsley, are you blocked and i know i've been repeating myself but that's just because i'm not looking forward to it and this is a normal manitoba winter it's not like we're surprised that it's minus 40 outside no it happens every year at the same time but every year when it comes around i i've found I never like it any more than the last year. I, I never really get used to it. It's always, it's always just, well, it's January, it's winter. But summer's coming. Are you done, Diesel? Are you done? Come on, you old man. Not an old man. According to the internet, you're a senior now. Do you know this? He is, uh, seven and a half years old now close to it anyways and he's going to be eight years old and he's got two more years of being a senior until he is classified as elderly they had a special word for it but i just call it elderly it's so sad feels like i just got him mm -hmm. i'm not ready for you to be old yet diesel all right come on i got your old man steps here come on old man all right, here, let me take your leash off. Take your leash off, all right. We're gonna go inside, we're gonna go for a ride today, okay? All right, up the old man steps. Good boys, good boys. All right, so uh, I'm gonna move a little closer to the building here. Well, I want my truck start. There you are. Diesel, I need my mirror. Get down. Thank you. I'm back out of this little spot and park a little closer to the building because this parking lot is ginormous and I'm feeling lazy. We're going to go inside and uh, grab a coffee, wash our face and stuff, brush our teeth. Then we'll be ready to rock and roll. I like these trips where I'm not in such a rush, not constantly just like go, 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 where I can sort of, you know, take the time to take care of myself, you know, like brushing my teeth, taking nice long showers, which I did here. Remember this shower? I didn't show it to you this time because I showed it to you last time. The shower here uh, has like the, the jets or the showers on the side that spray you from the side. Then they got like the raining one that rains down on you from right above you. It's got another one in front of you that sprays in your face. It was awesome. I love it. I want a shower like that at home. But yeah, I have the time to do that, which is nice. Oh, these potholes. Seriously. You could drown in one of these potholes. Seriously. Look at these things. A child could drown in that. <laughs> Welcome to Canada, eh? Watch out through the potholes.
just had to uh, pull over and report another vehicle that was recklessly driving, which I think they were driving intoxicated. It happened in Salmon Arm, BC. And the interesting thing is that this is the third time recently, I think it's three times in a row, that I've had to report an intoxicated or a reckless driver in this area of BC coming through here. Now, I, I don't know if he was drunk, he looked like an older guy, uh, pretty heavy set, he was the only guy driving a minivan. I'm assuming he'd be a family guy then, but uh, he was all over the road. What happened was we were coming into Salmon Arm from the west side, we're headed east, and uh, I started noticing this van that kept hitting the shoulder and kicking up dirt and stones at the vehicles behind him, right? And so maybe he's on his phone, he's not paying attention. Uh, reserve judgment for a little bit, but then he started wandering into oncoming traffic twice he went fully into the oncoming traffic lane with vehicles coming and he forced a big pickup dually truck to go around him on the shoulder half in the ditch to avoid him it was bad and then you think that would have scared him awake right scared him straight no he did it again after that he wandered into oncoming traffic not as bad the second time but they still had to avoid him by going around on the shoulder and then after that if that wasn't enough to wake the guy up about a half a dozen times after that yet, he hit the shoulder where he was almost hitting the ditch. So he was all over the road on both sides. This was within about 20 minutes of us approaching town. So at this point, I had my headset on already and I was getting ready to call the police as soon as I could get his license plate number. But there was a pickup truck in b between us that wouldn't, didn't want to, understandably didn't want to get too close to that vehicle because they were going to cause an accident. So I couldn't get the plate and the, the vehicle was dirty. So, uh, we got into town, thankfully he didn't hit anything, and I pulled up beside him at a traffic light, I got his plate number, I got his description of him, and uh, I had gotten to roll his window down because I wanted to see if he was like slurring his words badly or not, because I wanted to report if he was drunk or not. But uh, I asked him, have you been drinking? You're going to kill somebody. He gave me the one finger salute. Well, all right then. That's the final straw. So I, I, he pulled off into a parking lot and I pulled off a little ways up the road because I couldn't follow him with my truck into that parking lot. I wanted to see where he was going. And I had the police on the line and I gave him his plate number, vehicle description, physical description, and I told them what had happened. And it's a small town. I mean, they're gonna find him. And hopefully uh, just check on him, make sure he's all right. I mean, maybe. Maybe he was on medication. Maybe he was drunk. Maybe he was high. And this is British Columbia, and marijuana is legal Canada wide now. You can buy it just like you can buy alcohol. And BC is known for their bud. They call it the BC bud, right? So I don't know what he was on, but he was—he shouldn't have been behind the wheel, anyways. So he's gonna get someone hurt. So they're gonna look into it. My, my point of telling you this whole story again is, I guess, this is the third time. I'm pretty sure third time in a row coming through here that I've had to report someone for reckless or intoxicated driving. And I don't want to create a stereotype or anything, but if you're driving through here around Salmon Arm, Sycamus area of BC, keep your head up. Because not everyone else is. It's kind of freaky. I'm so glad he didn't have an accident. That could have been bad. That pickup that he forced around him onto the shoulder and into the ditch. The, the pickup didn't hit the dead, like didn't crash or anything, but oh, it could have been bad. I could have been a first-hand witness to a head-on collision at highway speeds. Oh, I'm spitting, dicks. Scary stuff, scary stuff, and you know, I don't like to be a little snitch or anything, but for the sake of everyone else on the road, I figured I should probably alert somebody to this guy. Somebody needs to get him off the road. I mean, I'm not the perfect driver either. Sometimes everybody has it where they uh, they wander a little bit onto the line or whatnot, but he was fully in the opposing lane of traffic. That would have... If I would have seen that, First hand, I've never seen an accident like that first hand. I don't want to. 
I thought I might today. Keep your head up, people, and get a friend to drive you if, if you shouldn't be driving. Or just don't drive. Just stay there. Stay where you are. This is an older guy, too. He should have known better. He looked like he was in his 40s, 50s, 40s, maybe? Late 40s? That's what I would guess. And you know what? Every time, it's the same description. Middle-aged guy, alone in the vehicle, veering all over the road. Anyways, we got a long way to go today yet. Good morning, you beautiful people. I'm filming this on Wednesday. Hope you're doing fantastic. We slept here at the Petropass in Medicine Hat, Alberta. Had a good sleep in. We're just rolling out. I'm just gonna wander over towards the pumps over here where the garbage cans are, because uh, at these truck stops, they don't have garbage cans nicely spread around the parking lot. They just have them at the pumps, so that's okay. Just gotta go throw out my garbage bag so, so that I don't carry it around with me. I don't like carrying garbage around with me. So every morning I gotta go and uh, throw it out. So today it's going to get cold. I just talked to Britt back at home in Manitoba and it is minus 37 without the wind chill right now. So it's going to get cold. So we're gonna be very careful. We don't want to get into any trouble in the weather. Make sure our fuel doesn't gel, make sure our truck stays running and that we stay warm and that we only stop at places where there's a warm, a warm shelter. So that if the truck suddenly stops running and we can't get going again, or if we freeze up while we're parked there, we have somewhere warm to go inside to. All right, now that all the garbage is gone, put it right here. This truck is ready to ready to rock. I just want to reset my tripometer. I do that every day still, just so that I can get an, an idea of how far I've driven. And how much further I want to go yet. So I don't know exactly where it starts to get cold. It's not that cold here. I was outside now in just a t-shirt. It's uh the truck says it's plus three here right now. That's three degrees above freezing. So Regina, one province over, about six hours or seven hours from here. No, 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 not from Medicine Hat. Four or five hours from here, something like that. Uh, there it's already about minus 25. So... Somewhere in between here and there, the temperature drops. There's a whole bunch of air that came from the Arctic. I explained this yesterday, right? Came from the Arctic, uh, it was hovering over the Hudson's Bay like it always does. And then at this time of year, every year, it sneaks out and comes south from the Hudson's Bay over Nunavut, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, uh, western, northwestern Ontario. And then it goes into the US from there. And then it goes over to the Great Lakes, like uh, Michigan, Illinois, North Dakota, Minnesota. That's all coming from the Hudson's Bay up north. It'll only last about another week and then it'll start getting warmer again. Every year, uh, the, the first, last two weeks of January and the first two weeks of February are the deep freeze. They're the coldest months. That's when weather like this comes down from the north. But later in February, just like every year, it'll start warming up again, and by the time March comes around, oh, it'll be feeling like springtime. In April, all the snow will be gone. And then we're on our way to camping season. It's starting to get really cold and windy. We're coming up to Regina, Saskatchewan here. Uh, and I'm gonna go up to Brandon tonight. It's going to be minus 34 in Brandon overnight, but I'll be able to park at a truck stop that's 24 hours. So if, you know, the worst happens and my truck stops running, me and the dogs have warmth close by. We can go inside and keep warm. 
I was gonna go straight to Portage La Prairie, but they, as far as I know, they don't have a 24 hour truck stop. They do have the Flying J there on the east side of town, but they closed for the night. So if my truck were to freeze up there, I would have nowhere to go. And I guess I could always go find a place in town to park near Tim Hortons or something, but yeah, I'd rather not drive too far into the night just because it's going to be so cold. So Brandon is about uh, four hours ahead of us. We'll get there around 10 o'clock. Find us a good parking spot, I hope. And uh, <laughs> Bunker down for the night. We gotta be in Portage for 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. And it's supposed to warm up a little bit tomorrow. It's supposed to go up to like the mid minus 20s. So at least I won't be rolling up these tarps in minus 35. It'll only be minus 25. It makes quite a big difference. It's still cold. We got good fuel in the tanks. We got fuel conditioner, anti-gel in there. I'm gonna fuel up in Brandon again so that I go to bed with full tanks, put some more anti-gel conditioner in there. And just hope for the best. <laughs> That's all you can do. It's winter time. Comes around every year. Can't act surprised. Yeah, even the trains are still going. Look at that. I wonder how they keep their fuel from gelling up over there. The economy's got to keep going. We got to keep running. Country doesn't stop just because it's a little cold. Can you imagine if we wouldn't work through this weather? <laughs> People would notice really quickly. They wouldn't have fuel in their cars in the morning. <laughs> wouldn't have food on the shelves. You guys know that whole spiel. Just got to do it. Got to make it work and be prepared. Temperature down on my dash there right now says n minus 19 Celsius right now. Oh, and this guy's got his bright fog lamps on. Oh, good for you, good for you. I'm glad you can see. I don't see any fog, but you know, one of my pet peeves people who have all their bumper lights and fog lamps on all night every day even though there's no fog I, I, I just want to take a hammer and just go there and smash them every time I see them. I woke up and it was still minus 30 outside and all of these drop trailers here there 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 I'm guessing those are all trucks that froze up and had to be towed out of here. So I'm actually kind of nervous. My truck is still running, but uh, that doesn't mean she's gonna pull for me yet. So we're gonna get ready here and see what she see what she can do. Well, once again, just as I was waking up and getting ready to do my stuff, my truck decides it's time to do a regen. Almost every morning already. As soon as I come out of the sleeper, it's like it senses it. I sit down in the seat here, I start fiddling with stuff, start waking myself up a bit, and she starts to do a regen. Weird coincidence. So I'm gonna take you with me for a little bit yet, just to make sure that this truck keeps running. Or make sure that it pulls. It, it's something else. It, it can be idling, but still might not be able to pull because if the fuel did somehow gel a little bit, even though I put in lots of anti-gel, as soon as I start pulling, it needs to suck more fuel through the fuel filter to get the truck moving. And if there's gel in there, that plugs up the fuel filter really quick and then suddenly you're not moving at all. That's, that's the real test once we get out there on the road. There's one driver beside me now that I saw pulling. It's just pulling up. Oh, he stopped. Not sure if he's frozen or not. Oh, he's just going back and forth right now. I'm a little nervous. I really hope that uh, I'll be able to get home and get this load off my trailer. I got four tarps to unload, or four tarps to fold up in this today. That'll be in tomorrow's vlog, but 
Man, I am no fan of this cold weather. I'm only living in it because I have to. And that guy didn't even clear off his taillights. His taillights are completely covered with snow. Five star pre-trip, buddy. All right, everybody, moment of truth. I've already moved up a little closer to the store here so I can go in and grab a coffee. And we seem to be fine. The truck has done its regen. And uh, done my pre-trip. It's time to see if this baby's gonna get us up to highway speed or if I'm gonna have to call the shop. We'll park it indoors overnight. I think we're gonna be fine. I got a pretty good feeling about it because I prepared so much for it. But if I freeze up or gel up now, there was nothing I could do about it. I did everything I could to prevent it. So we're moving, so that's good. It's just, I don't know if it will be able to get enough fuel through the fuel filter, if there is gel in there, to pull us up to highway speed. That's what I'm worried about. But at least this way I know I can at least limp it to a shop somewhere and they can pull it inside. So that's good. Truck is heating well. Temperature outside right now is minus 28. I, I, I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be all right. Now that the sun is up in the sky, it, it does give a much warmer effect. Warmer effect, <laughs> that's what it does, it's the sun. I know, you know what I mean. Warms it up a little bit, makes you feel better. Gives you some of that good old vitamin D. Right? Is that what the sun gives you? So far, so good. I don't feel any lack of power. I checked the fuel filter and it's a little higher. The fuel level in is a little higher than I'd like it to be. But it wasn't up to the top. And I know that I gotta get this truck serviced soon anyways, so it wasn't anything that set off any alarms to me. And here we go. Yeah, we're fine. We're fine. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Okay, good. That means all our preparation paid off. And this is where I'm gonna end today's video. You guys know that we're safely driving again. We gotta start tomorrow's video where we're gonna deliver this freight. Uh, and then later on, we're gonna go home. So I'll see you then, guys. Thanks for tuning in today with me, keeping me warm. And we'll see you all again very soon. Don't forget to subscribe.